because of technology, you know, right? You can literally see into a glass ball and look into a future. <laughs> Hey, what's going on guys? Jeff Koga here as I'm recording this episode of podcast and I want to talk about something as I'm driving home and if you're listening in on this uh, episode of this podcast, make sure you go check out jeffkoga.live and uh, watch me as I literally do a social experiment to see exactly how this is going to turn out. I'm documenting exactly how I work and I'm back at it again. I actually came back from Vegas uh, last week from a wedding and um, I'm back actually recording uh, kind of the behind the scenes stuff at the office but something that popped in my mind as I'm driving home because there's so much stuff that happened the last couple days so I want to talk about how you can live in the world of curiosity or you can live in the world of ignorance but you can't do both and this really has to do with just life principles in general in my, in my opinion and uh, uh, how this even relates into business and making money and things like that right because that happens to be some of the a lot of stuff I talk about but this kind of popped in my mind because of a conversation I had with one of the friends and uh, you know my wife and I were working on uh, growing a family right so we're practicing yeah you know you can let your imagination go wild with that statement and uh, I like to talk to you know people who are uh, already you know parents right especially like people who have kids and stuff like that right so well, I got in a conversation with one guy and uh, I haven't really talked to him uh, about much other than what he does and got into conversation about being a, a parent and uh, I just a genuinely just an interesting like I always live in the world of curiosity, right? So uh, even though people that from the outside world sometimes feel or maybe think that I'm very arrogant or sometimes pompous, yes, I am with certain things that I'm firmly, I believe in, right? I'm very passionate about. Yes, I'll make a statement. Yes, I will draw a line in the sand. And yes, I will stand up for what I believe in and stuff like that. But when it's outside of my scope of what I know, right? I am actually interested in a whole lot of stuff, right? So this particular person um, is in the biotech industry, okay? So, so we started getting a conversation first about biotech and technology and what, what he's doing. And, you know, it was, it was really interesting because he started talking about how, how his company tests DNA testing, right? That you put in your mouth and you can find out, you know, what where you're from, or what family members are from, or what part of the world and stuff like that, right? So he sells that as a as I believe, you know, I could be misquoting, but he, you know, um, as a sales guy uh, for that particular company, and that company has about 90% market share of that particular industry. So when someone's part of like a big organization, and regardless, even if it's big or even small, right? I like to listen and I like to ask a lot of questions because I'm genuinely curious and I and I want to learn, right? So and especially you know chemistry and biotech as well and just you know that environment I'm really really interested in about because I'm a firm believer that I think that industry is really is going to push mankind forward even more okay not not the internet okay not like some startups okay yes startups but more of the startup in the space of biotech why is because you know the, the leaps and bounds that we've, we've seen throughout mankind and throughout mankind history has always been someone in the, in the space of engineers right that streamlined something and or some someone that has uh, some type of chemistry background Okay? Talk about like someone like Thomas Edison, right? Someone like uh, even uh, Nikola Tesla, right? They all had chemistry as a background. They all had some type of science background. They all had some type of engineering background, right? So when when we talk about uh, biochemistry, right? I'm really, really genuinely interested. Why is because I think that's the new front of where where we're gonna see a lot of headways and a lot of positive things. I think for society in general, right? So I was interested, right? So we're having this conversation about you know uh, DNA mapping right and genome uh, projects and stuff like that and uh, from there it kind of um, pivoted and I'll talk about some of the other conversations about that later on but really we kind of pivoted and started talking about like um, family right started talking about because he just had a son and uh, starting to get into a conversation about DNA testing right and uh, it got interesting in the fact that 
I didn't know about this where if you wanted to find out something is wrong with your child, you got a baby in your tummy, right? Guess what people would do? They would actually have to stick a needle and suck out that plasma inside that placenta, right? Um, I believe that's the correct, correct term. And then from there, they would test that uh, plasma and then be able to, or the liquid fluid in there and to see if the baby has any type of problems like Down syndromes and things like that, right? So I'm very curious about that because my, my wife is over 30 years old and we know that, you know, complication in birth, you know, it gets, you know, greatly increased when you get older and older, right? So, so he was talking about this and uh, talked about a, a new test. I didn't know about this where you take blood samples from uh, someone's arm or whatever and uh, be able to run tests to see if your kid is going to have some type of problems. Okay. Now I asked him, I said, Hey, you know what? Well, why'd you decide to do that? And he kind of said, well, um, and I hope I'm not butchering it. If he hears this uh, later on or someone in the circle of friends hears this later on, just know that um, I'm paraphrasing a lot of the conversation we had because we were talking for a good couple hours actually about this topic in general. But, you know, we started having a conversation about, um, you know, he was concerned because, you know, his wife is a little bit on the older side as well, right? And he wanted to find out to make sure that his child that he's going to have does not have any type of complications, right? And the reason why I come to find out, I didn't know about this, is that he has a brother that is a special need uh, uh, brother, right? So he has grown up with that, right? With a child that has a special need. And um, obviously one, I have no experience in that, right? And I don't know anything about that um, other than the fact that I did actually tutor when I was actually very young about that. And, uh, you know, I ran into that. And um, so I asked him, I said, dude, like, why, why'd you do that? And he was just like, well, I wanted to find out if my wife who's bearing my child is gonna have any issues or not. And uh, this is where you start wondering, right? Right here at this moment in time, right? Depending on where you're actually at, right? In terms of your belief system, are you pro-choice or you're not pro-choice, right? It's a fine line for you to start saying, okay, which way are you gonna lean towards? Because I asked him, I said, look, how early can you actually take this test to find out you know, if something is wrong with your kid? And he was just like eight weeks. And he said not only that, but he said, hey, if you take this actual test, you can actually find out if your kid is going to be a, a boy or is going to be a girl. And I'm just like, wow, that's interesting. And uh, luckily enough, right, he has a healthy baby, healthy son, and things like that, right? So nothing was wrong. But I asked him, I said, so what would you have done if you have found out that your son may have had some problems? And uh, kind of looked at me and he said, you know, I don't know. That's what he said. And then I kind of asked another question, right? And by the time I'm asking this, right? If you know my personality type, you know, obviously it was the first time we were getting into deep conversation about this. You probably thought, you know, maybe I was a little weird asking this, but I said, look, I said, look, you took the test for a reason, clearly, right? So did you already have an opinion on what you wanted to do um, if you were to find out if your child had actually had some uh, problems? Right, and that was the question I asked. And he said, you know what, honestly, I don't know. That's what he said. But he said, one thing is that I do know for a fact is that, you know, uh, my brother has special needs and I knew that it would be a very, very difficult life, not just for him, uh, but also at the same time for the parents as well. And, uh, you know, hearing that as, you know, myself and my wife were trying to grow our family, I'm just like, wow, you know, I'm for taking that particular test to find out, obviously, but you know, when you're put into that position, what would you do, right? And that was kind of the question that kind of kept on coming around my brain um, as I was having this conversation with him. And I was just like, what would you do? And, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, it became, um, I converted into Catholicism, actually, for the fo folks that n might know this, right? Uh, to Christianity and things like that, right? So my belief system on the things that I used to believe in has significantly changed over the course of as I've gotten older and stuff like that. And I'm just like, man, like, what would you really do? And it's a tough question to answer, right? It really is. And uh, I don't know yet on what I would do. I honestly don't know. I have an idea probably because and me being my selfish side, right? I'll be like, man, I don't want to put my kid through that um, if he has some special needs or something like that. But also at the same time, is this what God has plans for me about, right? As well as uh, do I want to put my wife through that? You know, I say no, but that's kind of a selfish thing, right? Um, so, so those are the questions that you ask yourself when when you're actually put in a position like that. You know, where because of technology, you know, right? You can literally see into a glass ball and look into a future because of technology. And when you're there and you're able to do that, and now you're in a position and you're kind of like, okay, what will you do? 
right? It's not an easy answer, in my opinion. And uh, as I said earlier, you know, luckily enough for him, you know, his son is perfectly healthy. And we had other conversations about, you know, biotech and, you know, kind of like the um, what's, what's going on in that particular industry. And I want to end with this is because I'm already home and um, I got to eat because I'm really hungry, um, which is this, is that it is so true. You can live in the space of ignorance or you can live in the space of curiosity, but you can't live in both. And it's so true in life. It's so true in the world of even just making money. It's so true in the world of business. I think it's just it's so true in everything, right? Um, which is we can say, hey, you know what? What? Why something won't work or um, why something is wrong? Versus maybe asking the question that says, okay, why does that particular person have that uh, belief system? Why does that particular person even thought about that? And when you're put in a position something like that, where where again, you know the odds are stacked against you not only the odds are stacked against you um, when because you know statistically they say hey women that are get closer to age 30 and above right you know when they have kids there's a higher risk of that and uh, so you use technology to kind of look into that glass ball to look into the future to say okay is there something uh, wrong that possibly wrong is going on now, obviously, if there's something perfectly fine, then I, I guess it's okay. It's kind of put you at ease and you'll be like, okay, cool. Nothing's wrong. But if you do find something, what do you do? Right? And that's not an easy answer. And I wanted to kind of share that with uh, my listeners here because uh, um, as I'm growing a family, you know, that, those are some of the things that, that my brain is going through. And I don't know if anyone else has ever gone through something like that or even experienced anything like that. If you guys did, let me know. Uh, reach out to me some way, shape, or form uh, via email or via Facebook or Instagram or whatever it is and let me know your thoughts. Um, but that's, that's what I got because, again, living in the space of curiosity, I discovered that. Otherwise, I wouldn't have discovered it. And uh, now it's kind of left me in the limbo of trying to be like okay what's gonna happen next right so um that's what i got for you um uh, this is jeff koga and i will talk to you guys tomorrow morning take care love you guys whoever that's listening